Welcome back to Level Construction. In this video, Logan shall continue with placing decoration static meshes. What we're going to do now is focus on this little windowed alcove out to the side. We're going to put some basic decorations and um, some things like a, a kind of grid mesh on the back, maybe a steam pipe and some machinery. Okay. So let's get started with the, uh, the grid lattice work. What I'm going to do is load up the static mesh browser, and we're going to look for the LT Deco package, which we have here. And the mesh we're looking for is SM Grid X. Let me scroll up some and see if we can find. There right it is, there. SM Grid X. So let's add that near the floor. We're probably going to have to add about two of these to fit the height. And it looks like we'll also have to do some scaling. Mm -hmm. um, looking at it, let's go get some measurements so we can line this up more easily. Looking at it from a top view here, I almost wonder if I can get away with the drag grid of 8. This 4 is a little bit fine for some of this positioning. And let me also make sure that I align this back to the grid, just to make positioning easier. And to verify, I'll stick that to the back wall and everything's looking good. Now, as far as measurements go, I think we have a width here. Let's see, we've got 128 width on the grid piece itself. And we have a 224 width that we need to fill. So that means we could take the, uh, the overall size and say 224 divided by 128 gives us a scale of 1.75. So let's scale that up in X by 1.75. And X was the wrong way. Let's leave that as 1. I think it was Y. Cause yeah. Looking at that. There we go. That's better. So now we can center it up on that wall, and now it's fitting perfectly. Okay. Though it looks like it should be scaled up in Z as well. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we know it's 128, and we know we want two pieces to fill it. So we want to scale up by a factor of two, because we have 128. If we filled 256, it would only take two of the pieces to fill the whole height. So we'll take Z and bump that all the way up to two. And there we have a nice scale fitting half of the, uh, the width there. And from here, I could pretty much duplicate up. Let me see if I can find a convenient view. Um, side looks like it'll work great. Or we can duplicate and drag this up, match up the Z dimension, check the top, and it's fitting not perfectly. I might have it overlapping a little. No, it's looking good there. Maybe I don't have it aligned to the floor, actually. Could be... Ah, well, there's... Click, and yep. <laughs> top, and now we're good. So that's, yep. that's fitting in there very nice now. All right, the next piece I want to add to this room is a steam pipe. I want to have a steam pipe that goes from the floor to the ceiling, and I want a kind of broken area of the steam pipe near the top of the room. Now, the mesh that I'm going to use for this pipe is the same as the lift support. If we go and take a look at one of these lift supports, there is another variant of this mesh that is a curved and broken-looking steam pipe. So I'm going to start with these supports, and we'll use those as the base. As a matter of fact, I'm going to grab two of these and duplicate them over to the little alcove room. So I'll go up to a top view where I can see everything, hold Alt, and drag these all the way over to the little side room. And let me move the camera back in as well. Now I want to put this, set the scales back on these, because we've got that funny oblong shape that we had set up for the lift. Let me put all these draw scales back to one. And that gives us a mesh that is too large for the little alcove, so what I'll do is I'll drop the overall draw scale to 0.5, and then we retain the nice round shape. Now, with the way these are positioned, they're kind of passing through each other, so let me grab the top one and slide it up just a little bit so that they're aligned nicely. And let me also grab the side view and make sure that these are stuck to the floor. The floor alignment's still working well. Mm -hmm. And let me zoom back a little, maybe even move these a little bit back towards the wall. I may end up changing this slightly once we get more of the meshes in place, but I think here is a pretty good starting point. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to find a broken piece of this pipe that I can attach to the top here. Now, an easy way to find where in the static mesh browser this mesh came from is to sync the static mesh browser. So what we can do is we can right-click on it and say Sync Generic Browser. That'll load up the static mesh browser or whatever browser is necessary, or whatever um, resource types are necessary to find what you had clicked on. In this case, we had clicked on a static mesh, so it brought us to static meshes and selected the pipe we were using, which happens to be skew pipe 01. And if we scroll down just a little bit, there's some broken variants. We have skew pipe 04 low, and that's a uh, broken version. It's a little bit dark in that thumbnail, but let me add it into the level, and we can get an idea of what it's looking like. To try to get the scale, or the, excuse me, the position to match up, I'm going to right click on the very top of our current pipes and add in this new skew pipe 4. 
Now it seems to have the same rotation. If you remember when we added the other skew pipe, it was also aligned horizontally instead of vertically. So let's rotate that back up about 90 degrees. And let's set the scale to 0.5 to match our other pipes. And then we can start to move this into place. And I might have to drop the drag grid. Or maybe those other brushes aren't on a an 8 drag grid. Let me just see what happens if I grab both of these and tell it to align and move to grid. There we go. It's, it looks like when we were moving in 1 and 2 grid units, we had dropped it off of an 8 unit grid. But with everything snapped back to an 8 unit grid, all of these are lining up very nice. And we can see at the very top now, we have this line of pipes ending in a broken pipe at the top. Okay. Now I'm going to take this pipe and duplicate it and attach it to the ceiling. So I switch over to rotation and alt drag a duplication at about 90 degrees, looking for... 180. And let me uh, also wait around 90 in the top as well. There we go. So I can drag this up and stick it up into the ceiling somewhere. And actually that was not quite 90, so let's fix that in the side view. There we go. Now I like the top one aligning to the ceiling. Well, let me see. Maybe if I move it up just a little bit more. I want to move either the top part up or the rest of it down. I think I'll grab all of these and drop them down just maybe a unit or two so we have some more space in between them. I think something like that looks good. Okay. It sticks to the floor a little bit, but we won't be able to see back here anyway. So I think that's looking nice. Now, it would probably be a good idea to add some type of... Uh, framing or source mesh so we don't have the pipe sticking directly into the ceiling and the floor. So what I'm going to do now is look for a good um, support or round circular support. So I'm going to load up the LT Deco package in the static mesh browser. Actually we're already there. And let me find the uh, SMVent01 mesh and select it. And we'll add one of those to the ceiling and one to the floor. So there's the ceiling. As a matter of fact, I'll just move. It's already um, oriented to be put um, right side up, so let me move this one to the floor. I'll worry about the ceiling in here in just a second. So let me move that in, and maybe looking at it, that's looking pretty good. Centered up on the mesh, just so we have a nice little mm -hmm. kind of plate thing it fits into. So let me duplicate it by rotating 90 degrees, and let's move this to the ceiling. Zoom out a little bit and drag this all the way up. Zoom back in. Okay, you're really starting to get me with these rotated 90 degree things. <laughs> Isn't that more of 180 degrees when you take something no. and flip it all the way around? I think pretty much every rotation I've described has been 90. <laughs> all right, that is, the, that is the new rule. We've hit probably 45, 180, 135. <laughs> I usually call it 90. We shall call them all 90. <laughs> I'll just start calling it duplicate using rotation. We'll <laughs> rotate this until it points the correct way. There you go. <laughs> it's just funny. But I think that's that's looking good for mm -hmm. the ceiling. So we've got a nice source point for that line of meshes. Now the next thing I want to do is add some kind of curved girder beams that go around about the center of the room. And in order to get some of those, what I'll do is I'll steal some of the girder beams that we have from this room. As a matter of fact, I'll grab two of them at whatever seems to be a convenient height, maybe these two. Let me move over to a top view so I can see what I've got selected. And let me also take um, this, all of these um, girder beams along with it. So two girder, two I beams on either side, and then the middle half circle. And I'll alt drag to duplicate all of these things over to the little alcove room. Now, of course, the scale is way too large on those, as it's mostly outside of the room, at least for this given positioning. So let me grab the two meshes, just the two quarter circle meshes. Now let me scale them down now. They're at about 0 .3, 0 0.33 now. Let me see. 0 0.2. I think 0 0.2 looks a little small. Let me try 0.25. And I think this is about the point where I get a little bit less concerned with exact sure. snapping. Just trying to come up with a scale that will roughly fit it in to this area. Because let me see. If we have that set there, it looks pretty good. I don't want it to go too far forward because I want the girder beams to not go through the glass. Let's move some of them over, one about on that side, one about on this side. In the top view, they don't center perfectly, but in, the f in a uh, gameplay view, we can't really see the point which they hit the mesh, so it's really hard to tell. I do want to move both of these I-beams up, though, because they're not going to the ceiling. 
So we'll grab both of them and simply slide them up until they snap in place along the floor, which means that along the ceiling, we're good. And let me see. Also, I'd rather these semicircle meshes go a little bit higher. As a matter of fact, I may even take everything and bring it forward just a little bit. Um, well, let me see. The idea is that I want them to kind of pass through the, uh, the steam pipe towards the center. And there's a nice little kind of cage mesh you can put around it. So let me select all of the steam pipe. And it's top static mesh. And drag it back just a little bit until it kind of centers up on these pieces here. So maybe back just a little bit more. Alright, let me drop the drag ridge down just a little bit. Maybe to four. There. And now let me take each piece on the side. Let me see if I can get away with turning the drag grid back up. And moving it out just a little bit so that it hits about the edge of the, uh, the pipe. Maybe I even out a little bit more. Maybe something right there. So we have just a little bit of space on either side. Now I want to find a circular uh, cage mesh. And there's one that's very similar to these grid pieces, but built in a circle instead of as a flat piece. So let me load the uh, static mesh browser back up. And let me switch back over to... Um, LT Deco, which we already have selected. That's kind of convenient. So let's scroll up near the top where we had some of those nice grid pieces. Maybe a little bit down. Here we have a nice 360 degree circular or cylindrical cage made out of that X grid shape. And let me add that in right about where these curved pieces are. And it's scaled up way too large. So let's drop the scale. I'll probably need to drop the drag grid just a little bit to get it to line up. Um, let me drop down to... I probably should have stayed in 4. Because with 4, I can snap that right into place. And for the scale, let's see. If we take overall scale to half, it's looking better, but maybe even less. Maybe 0.25. Because that encompasses the mesh. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe 0.3. There, that connects into the other pieces. Maybe even... Let me see. Let me adjust it in... Uh, and see just a little bit. Let me also take these curve pieces and move them up like I was going to. Move both of these up. Where'd the manipulator go? Same, move these up. Maybe about halfway. I'm trying to decide if I should put them above the walkway level or below it. I might try for above it. Just a little bit. As a matter of fact, let me see how high I can move this grid piece. Let me also increase its scale and see just a little bit. Maybe take it up to 0.2 after uh, after the initial scale. Maybe not quite 0.2, maybe 1.5. Something that kind of matches the, uh, the height of the other pieces it's going to connect to. And I can move it up about that high before we start to get into the curved region of that one mesh. Maybe down just a little bit. Grab these meshes. Move them up until they fit, roughly. Maybe something like that. This could almost be a little bit larger. Let's try 1.55. And move it down. And maybe 1.6. There we go. So that way we've got... Um, let me make sure that these meshes aren't going through the wall too much. Also, I moved them out to the side. I don't mind if they go through the wall a little bit. Because as long as we can still see the top runner pieces, we'll leave it be. Let me move the I-beams back out just a little bit to line everything up. And that's looking kind of nice. We've got the steam pipe braced in using these circle pieces and then a circular grid unit. And if I check on the sides, we don't have this going through any of the meshes, so especially the glass. If I zoom back, I think that's starting to look pretty good. So we can move on from that piece now. Let's add in a piece of machinery, just some random tank-looking things to uh, fill in this uh, floor space. So what I'm going to do now is load up the uh, HU Deco 3 package, which we have over here. And I'm going to look for a mesh called uh, storage tanks. Let's see what we have. Near the bottom we have several storage tank meshes. I'm going to grab um, storage tanks 03. And we'll drop one of those in right on the floor. And scroll back a little to see which side of this is the front. 
That would be this side. So let's swing it around, not on that axis, back a little bit, no change, good. How about we rotate on Z? There we go. Z, and this time we actually are rotating 90 degrees. Imagine that. And we've got this mesh lined up now. Let me slide it a little bit closer to the front of the room. Or maybe not that close. Let me also center it up a little bit on that steam pipe kind of area, maybe. See, how's that looking? Maybe something like that. Okay. Now, to fill in the last little bit of um, open space in the back, let me throw a few crates around, because we have yet to add any crates, and this is a decoration section, so we need to go find some crates. I'm going to jump back to the uh, LT Deco package in the Static Mesh browser, scroll up, I think it's closer to the top where we have some container meshes. Mm -hmm. So we've got a single container, stack container, three stack containers, so these could be helpful. I'm going to grab first just a, a single box by itself, and we'll drop one of those in on the floor. And that doesn't mean we'll move this mesh, so let me just slide that back there real quick. Jump into the room and grab a piece on the floor. Let's add in first box. And let's rotate it just a little bit so it'll make it look like it's placed a little more haphazardly. And we could maybe duplicate this to the other side. Rotate it a little bit differently. Duplicate it one last time towards the back. Maybe something in there. Rotate it. And let's see. I need to and lift all of these up. are all stuck through the floor, so yeah. let me grab all of them. Let's move them up some. As a matter of fact, let me do this in a side view. It would probably be the most convenient. Zoom way in and maybe even up just a little bit more so it looks like they're resting on top of the, uh, mm -hmm. the tiles. And let's see. Let's switch to a uh, different box now. Let's grab the uh, two stacked boxes. And let's drop one of those in the background. So I'll add in two stack boxes, move them down just a unit or two, and give them just a little bit of a off kilter rotation. So something like that. All right, I think that's looking good. Um, so yeah, no matter what view that you take on the room now, now it, it looks like it's populated. We've got some nice mesh work going in the background, some support work. Um, let me deselect some of these boxes. We've got some nice storage crates and a tank unit thing placed. Okay. So, I think that's all I wanted to take care of for this little uh, alcove section. All right, sounds good. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.